if there are like some very precise like specific questions about these topics or should i just try to give an overview about what we did and uh, the events that we have in there and uh, then we can talk about like how can that be kind of like included into the into the jenkins cloud events plugin as well i don't know cara that you might have more context no, I think that sounds great. Um, thank you all for being here. And really, we just want to ask you more questions about the event protocol that you worked on. It's mm -hmm. come up quite a bit in the last couple of GSOC mentoring meetings that we've had. So we really appreciate you giving mm -hmm. a more in-depth discussion here today. But, you know, Shruti has a lot of uh, very good questions. So. Good stuff, good stuff. So let me let me just share my screen quickly. Yeah. Um, and uh, let's go here first, right? Like, I'm guessing that you folks know kind of like this repository already, like the SIG events, that's kind of like where we're doing the, the work. And what you will find here is this kind of like directory called vocabulary draft, where you will find kind of like the events that we are just aiming to have. And there are like different, four different categories here. Uh, and here, just it's basic description of the events. And again, the idea of the specification here is not to define the cloud events per se, but kind of like the semantics of the events and the terminology around the events. Because that's kind of like usually not enough, and people usually want to see something implemented. We created kind of like this POC using uh, Tecton and um, and Captain, and they are just exchanging these cloud events uh, that are part of the CD working group, right? And I think that this is kind of like this image summarizes something similar to what I think that Shruti is trying to achieve with the with the Jenkins cloud event uh, um, plugin there. Uh, because it is related because we are using Tecton pretty much in the same way as we would use like Jenkins in general, right? Mm -hmm. And again, the idea here is that we will have event producers and event consumers. And in this case of Tecton and in the case of Jenkins, kind of like they are both, right? Like they are producing cloud events and they are also consuming cloud events, right? So we created a demo that basically it's showing interoperability between Tecton and Captain for doing different things. And we are sending cloud events. And we wanted to avoid sending cloud events from one service to the other one, right? Like we didn't want uh, like Tecton pipeline sending cloud events directly to Captain for a couple of reasons. But the main reason is that when you send events, you want to make sure that you use some infrastructure that it's ready to handle events and for example, handle handle redelivery and se sequencing. And for that reason, we uh, use for the demo here like the K native event broker which is already, you know, designed and it works with cloud events like out of the box, right? So it allows you to filter cloud events and it allows you to, um, yeah, just move clouds even around between different systems. And you can just define how to how you can subscribe to these events and send these events to whatever system you want. Uh, I am expecting to be able to do something with Jenkins. So if we have the cloud events plugin kind of like ready at some point, we can do something pretty, pretty similar with Jenkins or even like add Jenkins into this uh, demonstration, right? We are running two pipelines here with Tecton uh, and we can easily swap one of these pipelines to be run in Jenkins, showing kind of like, again, like now three projects interacting uh, and, and working together, trying to, to do something, right? The, the demo wasn't that difficult to build. The difficulty here, it's always understanding each of the projects and knowing exactly what are the things that you need to change or what are the things that you need to adapt in order to consume and, and emit the right cloud events. And when you cannot make the tools to emit and, and consume the right cloud events, then you usually create, like ended up creating a translation layer, right? And for Tecton, I think that this was kind of like the translation layer that we built. And for Captain, we needed two translation layers, the inbound uh, kind of like plugin or, or service, how, how they call it, and the outbound service as well. And again, this the idea here is that if we start having kind of like uh, plugins like in Jenkins, we start removing those translation layers uh, and we make kind of like in some way, we make the projects to adopt the cloud events that we are defining as kind of like the standard cloud events to interoper interoperate with other tools. Um, if you look at a little bit more at like uh, Knative Eventing, which is a project that I'm getting more deep into it, like into how it works and how it was architected, um, you will see that 
it is not difficult to use, but you, again, it's one of those things that you need to understand why you're using it and and why and in which situations, right? And for, for kind of like what purposes. If you keep it to the most basic concepts, you, what you do is basically you install Knative uh, eventing in a Kubernetes cluster, and then you basically create a broker. And then what you can do from your applications is send HTTP requests to that broker and forget about the cloud event, basically. Just send it there, and then you said, OK, whoever who wants to consume it, they need to create a trigger, which is a subscription, just to filter the events that are going to the broker and just and just get only notified when there is a, an, an event that it's you know, for a certain type that I'm interested in. right? So in general, that's kind of like how people tend to think about like native eventing. You just install it, and then what you do is you create brokers. And you might be wondering, kind of like, OK, but what's implementing the broker? And then you can go to Knative, like the documentation, and you see that there are like different implementations. So you can put Kafka in there. You can put RabbitMQ. You can use kind of like the cloud provider specific implementation. Uh, and that's definitely offering a great amount of flexibility that you can start simple, for example, in a, in a, in a local Kubernetes cluster with the, like an in-memory broker. And then if you want to make things more and more serious, like for production environments, you swap the implementation and put a different broker without changing any of the applications and any of the producers or consumers, right? Uh, so in general, like, kind of like that's the, the, you know, the main objective of the project is to abstract these brokers, which are basically in charge of receiving and filtering events and sending to different systems. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I would love to see like a demo with the Jenkins Cloud Event Plugin using the Knative eventing stuff. Uh, and I can definitely guide people on, on, on how you can configure that and what kind of infrastructure do you need in order to run it. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure at, at what stage the plugin is. And, uh, and, you know, and I would consider maybe more interesting to start working on the, on the adoption of this cloud, like new cloud events kind of like formats defined by the group instead of like worrying too much about the, the infrastructure and how do we connect systems. Can you folks kind of like share a bit more about like where are we right now and what kind of like questions did you have about like these projects and the POC or the cloud events that we have in the group? Uh, yes, I will go ahead with what we are doing here right now. And also thank mm -hmm. you so much Mauricio for um, sharing all of this and going through this. Uh, so in like the last two meetings, we we were discussing about an architecture where you know, and if we have like a Jenkins sync, it would basically be it, the sort of fall would have fault tolerance, would have recent capacity, and all of that stuff. And then um, we were in meeting with the Ensync team, and Andrea was there, and then we were going through the Knative, and the broker and trigger infrastructure and. And then the last meeting we were um, talking about this and with Bhav and Kara and everybody else suggested that we let's design a system similar to what's there in the POC with Captain and Tecton. And what we're gonna do for now is replace Captain with Tech um, Captain with Jenkins as a Jenkins outbound. So Jenkins would be sending cloud events to um, the Knative broker, and then um, we would have Tecton listening on to the events coming in from um from the broker for Knative. So what I have right now is actually I've been working on it and I have developed the um sort of the core components for it like separately and I've been trying to connect it in the morning like today but I'm having like a a bit of a trouble connecting um like the tecton event to listener. So it's Everything is there and it's designed, but when I'm sending anything to the event listener, it's not triggering a task run. So we were just testing with a simple task run. It's not really specific of you know extracting parameters or um, specific information from cloud events per se, but more or less first establishing that structure of Jenkins will send an event to Knative broker, and then there is a trigger which is basically have the um, the subscriber URL for the um, the Tecton event listener. Uh, so that's 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 an issue that I've been having with Knative or with um, Tecton actually not 
triggering anything when it's receiving an event on the event listener mm -hmm. i can let's see if i can sh i'm like i was working a while earlier uh just having an issue spinning up the um listener again it's giving me a timeout on the on the board how are you how are you running tecton and, and where are you running it so it's running on um kubernetes it's actually running on um a chaos so amazon's provision kubernetes mm -hmm. and uh, i like the clusters they are of sufficient size so if there was an issue with volume or anything like that i think that wouldn't be an issue i can so i can also share my um screen with what i mm -hmm. had on for tecton running let me so you can create and the, the other question is can you create like a task using kind of like the tecton command line tool and see it run for example yes yes so let me actually go ahead and think it's present now okay okay <laughs> all right um so so here was my like my um kept on running and so i had to change um the yaml quite a bit from basically it was so it's the same it's most of it is the same i just change the triggers to be more specific to you know just like simple triggers so i just like change it for one to have everything together had like a trigger template just a very simple of whenever it's receiving something on the um on the event listener just maybe like echo something you know hello shruti hello world whatever uh and and yeah so the namespace and service account is the same and then here's the event listener and i have the url for it so right now a while ago it was working but there's a connection um socket error so i cannot exactly like trigger it but it gets so when i'm when i'm like when i post a curl request to it let's see if i can see yeah so this is a point where it was working so if i have like a post request sent to the um event listener for tecton here's like what i'd get so this is i also have components ready for the cloud made or for the k-native broker and the um the trigger with the subscriber url for tecton so this was me just like testing if it is actually receiving an event and it's actually triggering something on mm -hmm. um like tacked on but i don't know i'm not really sure because i tried a lot of like changes inside of inside of my triggers or yaml to make sure that okay i don't know what might be wrong so i did try you know like having simple a uh, task here rather than like a trigger template instead of a task run or like putting this together i also tried running like task ref mm -hmm. uh but again, I'm not sure why it's not working. But if I'm on the UI, right? If I'm on the UI and if I create a task run, it has the definition here. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see. It, it doesn't. Ha it doesn't have it because I'm pretty sure that it, like something went wrong in like an hour. So I'll test it again. But before that, it had like the task here, which I had defined inside of um, the task ref or inside of like the template, the template mm -hmm. binding or the template. It had that here if I would like go and create. So it was working from the UI, but as soon as I would send a post request, nothing really would happen. Uh, uh huh. Okay. Okay. So there are a couple of things there. You can just check the one that is receiving the event in the cluster. So you have access to the cluster, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you have access yeah. to the pods that are running in the cluster e for receiving the events. Yes, yes. So looking at the logs there might be the first thing. The mm -hmm. second thing is that you need to send a cloud event, right? You don't need mm -hmm. to send like only a post. I don't know if you are sending a cloud event. Um, yeah, I also tried that. So that wasn't working either. So then I, I had like tried both like a simple JSON post and I also like tried sending a cloud events from the Jenkins um, event uh, uh, plugin that we have running. So I also tried that. So that wasn't working either. So let's see, where, where is our Jenkins? 
So at, at this stage, we pretty much have, for Jenkins, we pretty much have that part of Jenkins sending cloud events to an external system. And we tried playing around with Sockeye earlier. So it was working, it was receiving events. So if I go on to configure, this was the URL for the event listener but at the time when it was working <laughs> at the time when it was um it, like it was receiving requests and it, it didn't really have an error so i did try doing this as well this wasn't working either all of these events are basically like cloud event compliant events so where did you sure. where did you get that url from so right now actually when i'm trying it's right okay so i basically had like a okay let me go back to the url and i just copy paste this so right now this um, i'm getting a service unavailable and this might be like a port issue so i might have another port running i'm um, not really sure but before all of that when i was sending cloud events i like basically would get the same sort of uh, re reply from the server, which I was getting when I'm sending like a simple. So this was the reply that I was getting, even for cloud events, sort of like cloud event compliant event, and also for like the post event. But mm -hmm. it wasn't like triggering a task run. Um, yeah, because in order to trigger, so like, that's the other thing, like how did you install Tekton there in the cluster? Did you follow kind of like the POC? instructions um, yeah so like first like going on to tecton pipeline uh okay so you know like tecton mm -hmm. pipeline trigger i have the dashboard on um then applying obviously what was inside of you know like service role and bindings and all of that stuff i mean i do have the controller but like again as we we're going to we're not going to need that here so we can move away from that because we don't need that here and then in place of you know like um obviously like install the whatever resources we are going to need but replaced the triggers with just specifically um relating to like a very simple trigger of an event or a very simple trigger of a task run mm -hmm. Can you, but, but that's the thing that you maybe can do. It's like list the triggers with kubectl, right? And see if they are like applied and they do not have any errors in the in the resources. That's something that I will try first. And also I will check that the broker is, is running, for example. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I, I might have, <laughs> I might have like tried looking at, um, mm -hmm like if the resources inside were running specifically, like even when I had all of those things, you know, like I would have task mentioned here when it was like a different format of a task rather than like a task spec inside mm -hmm. of um, trigger um, mm -hmm. template. So I had the task mentioned here. I had the event listener, trigger binding, triggers, but it just, I'm not really sure why that was happening, but I think what I might do is set it up again because mm -hmm. it's like it is um, an AWS like EKS running um, cluster and there are a couple of other things that are running on it already so I might mm -hmm. try running it on another cluster because it could be an issue of I'm not sure but like cross port binding or something so okay I might try doing that but in general if you have like the components if you have the Tekton component that it's waiting for cloud events it should work, right? Like that shouldn't be a mm -hmm. problem that you should try to solve. And if it's not working, of course, we can reach to Andrea or I can try to help debugging. In mm -hmm. general, if I can access the cluster, if I can take a look at what's running in the cluster, it's way much easier than looking at the UI because the UI will not tell you. I mean, if something is failing, it you are not going to see there like the entry, right? Right. So it might be interesting to see that and also see if the broker is running, for example, that, that might be the, the next step to check and um, if you have the broker running, you can always use, you remember that in, in Knative, if you have the broker running, you can send events and then you, you can create a trigger for Sokai, right? So in that way, we usually debug kind of like these applications. If we don't know if the event is arriving to the broker, then first we send kind of like a request and we expect to get, for example, a 200 in response. That's something I would do. And then if I do not know if a trigger or like a subscription is working, I will create one to Sokai and I will just check if in Sokai that's arriving. 
you are thinking that you're trying the most complex use case, which is a tecton trigger, which is going to create a tecton object based on an event. So I will just try to split up the problem on checking that the cloud events are being moved around correctly. And then we can uh, basically yeah, just create the task definition and trigger it manually. And then we just trigger it by the cloud event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the problem is with um, with like Tecton communication to Tecton specifically because I also have Sockeye on the K like the cluster for the Kubernetes, and then I did try first like directly um, triggering from Jenkins to Sockeye. Then we am get we're getting events there, um, and I was also like doing like a cross, maybe having a middleware which would wrap events to Sockeye. Um, maybe like one thing we can try doing is shifting um, like the K native broker in between Jenkins and Sockeye to make sure that that part is working. But but even if even if we take away K native for now, I'm not really sure why the Tecton specifically is not working because as you said, you know, like trigger a definition manually and then try and triggering that from either like a like a post request or a cloud event. I did try it doing that as well. Like mm -hmm. I did try for triggering it manually, both on through the command line, then also went on to the UI and did that there, and then tried doing like a post from Jenkins cloud events, making sure that you know it's receiving something. But yeah, that didn't work. I'm not really again, not really sure, but I feel that it probably is might be some issue with the the trigger star yaml because there are different like alpha version beta version and w inside of that too there's like difference in how they're defining their um like yaml definitions so i yeah. looked at a lot of uh <laughs> like a lot Check. of um sorry, sorry yeah i think that, yeah i think that you're in the on the right track you just need to spend more time just figuring out the details in Tecton, you will see that there are like a lot of like namespaces filtering, and you have like the event listener that needs to be configured correctly, plus also the triggers, right? Like you need to make sure that the triggers and the event listener are in the same namespace, they are pointing to the right place, mm -hmm. and that you have kind of like you know everything in place to make sure that the, the things are connecting. That's why, like looking at the resources, for example, and looking at the trigger, for example, trigger status and to see that's OK, and also looking at the event listener status and making sure that that's up and running and in the right namespace. I think that that's super important. So again, it's like checking your configuration. And maybe I think that's something that will definitely help is creating something like uh, what Andrea created, like that uh, a script that basically does install all these things, uh, maybe in a kind cluster, right? Like you're running on AWS. That's a pretty yeah. complicated environment on its own, right? So maybe what you can do is just put Jenkins, you know, just start Jenkins in a container with the with the Cloud Events plugin. You already have kind of like that script that you know bootstrap Tecton and uh, and Kennedy Broker in a kind cluster. So this will kind of like enable you to just do it faster and like just to reproduce that very complex environment just with the single script. Mm -hmm. So it might be kind of like one idea to to look into it. If you are in Windows, that's a different thing. That's a more complicated stuff, but it can be done in the same way, right? Like you just need to create like a script from from scratch. But I guess that creating kind of like that sense of oh uh, yeah, I can reproduce this in a local environment, or I can reproduce this in AWS will help you a lot to just to avoid making mistakes of namespaces and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a good idea. And I might go on to like an EC2 instance or something because I don't have like Linux on my machine or, or like a VM or somewhere because I feel like it I might be easier. You have some good for Windows uh, and you can spin up Linux containers uh, on Windows. Mm -hmm. And uh, to start off, I think you should just run Tecton by itself and play around with event listeners without doing anything with the POC in the beginning. Because I have a feeling because of the POC, uh, some things here and there might be confusing right now. So just kind of like get started with, you know, running a simple task run and then running uh, event, an event listener, which triggers uh, triggers something like a basic task run. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you should start with that if you're on the Tecton side. And like rest of the stuff, I think it will just fall into place after that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like a fair point. And um, you, you, like, again, like the thing with Tecton that I feel it's probably the task run definition itself rather than like how the event listeners configured because the things with event listeners which could be wrong is yes you know uh, maybe the wrong port has been exposed for the url that i'm using or it's in a different namespace or something so i did check all of those things and it is receiving the like the request and it like it doesn't sort of you know like give me an error right away or it doesn't give me an error in general even when it was running earlier it's just the the triggering part of the task run from the event listener uh so which makes me wonder if the event like the task run definition itself which i have might 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 be incorrect somewhere so so the thing is uh i think there might be ui bug with the task run and the task the task stuff because uh in a task run, you can even uh, define the task inside the task run or reference it. So there might be an issue there with the UI. So try using the CLI for that because uh, it'll it'll become more clear that way, like what exactly you're doing. So whenever you do like tech TKN uh, task run LS or something, like you can see the status of the task runs or even the task has been triggered or not. So, I think that that's probably like probably move to the CLI for now because the mm-hmm. dashboard. Um, yeah, I think I think just uh, using CLI is more is kind of better at this point. Right. So um, I like when you say that the dashboard might not reflect. Do you mean that it does? Like there are bugs with whenever we are trying to push it from external systems or. They're just bugs. No, in- just uh, just kind of like formatting stuff. I mean, <laughs> I'm not a UI guy as such. I prefer to use CLI. And mm-hmm. in that way, uh, like right now, I saw the UI. I couldn't see. I could probably only see task reference over there. Mm-hmm. So I I couldn't see a place where you could mention the task in the task run, like the whole of a task. So yeah. So. Uh, Caught my attention, and uh, I think what you're doing is you're uh, giving a task with a ta- task from the task definition inside, or is it referencing a task which is already out there? So I did three different things. Uh, so the first thing was having the task. So I'm basically first is like using a trigger template and inside of that we have like the one of the resource template is the task run the one thing the first thing was like you it's specifying a task ref and then having a task outside of it so as i was saying earlier when i had that then over the ui it would specify like when i would click on um okay trigger a task from the ui just to make sure that you know that it's there actually so mm-hmm. i would go on to task um then go on to like task then define that particular task which i had defined in the yaml so it was present the other thing that i tried doing was inside of the um like task run have task spec which is just defining all of the steps inside of inside of the um the task run rather than like outside of it and i also had something similar to the what the poc has which is just defining like a task outside of like a trigger template and that's just sort of the the tr- the trigger so they, they i don't think that has the trigger template but it's more just the trigger which has the pipeline run so something similar to that and yeah that it like when i was on the ui it was working so i did try running that like steps from the task run going on creating a task inside of the inside from the definition in, in the in the yaml file so that worked as well but it was so just I, I have a question so did these tasks when you ran them individually without the trigger template did they run properly they ran even inside of the trigger template as well uh mm-hmm. when i had outside of them they ran when i had inside looking like something like i can share my screen let me see um like basically inside of you have the spec you have resource template ta- kind task run and then um task ref and then it's defining a reference to that particular task and then task is also another sort of crd mm-hmm. inside of that sim- same yaml file 
Oh, maybe I need to pull the components out into different YAML files because right now my trigger template, my um, like event listener, and also my like the template binding or the trigger binding, they're in the same file. I don't know why that could be, but it's like maybe worth trying if that can be an issue with different like sort of versions. So maybe I'm not sure. Everything should be V1, V1, V1. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure what the triggers. Uh, yeah, that's speed. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like uh, task references are something like it's in alpha, I guess. So that's why, in, like in the POC, we are enabling that, uh, mm. like in Tecton specifically with the flag. But uh, yeah. Anyways, I think that you're now like discussing the specifics, and I would definitely again like suggest the same as we about like simplify the setup. Like if you're running in AWS, that's complicated for us already just to keep track and just to help you to divide in that and also like uh, from the ui perspective is that sometimes the ui will not show you things that are like available in the resources themselves so you definitely need to get used to 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 do that and use kind of like the kubectl tool in order to see the details and figure out what's failing um but again if you have any of those issues just just let's create there a thread in slack and uh, we can definitely help you or at least try to guide you if you you know if you get stuck for for more than a couple of days yes yes that, yes that sounds good because definitely this is not creating so mm -hmm. uh that that sounds good thank you and well like one another question is sort of more specific to the entire poc um mm -hmm. just would be enabling that sort of infrastructure where um agnostic sync and source binding can work uh so you know like how you mentioned with captain that you had to create systems as a translation layer for um moving like cloud events between different systems so uh mm -hmm. how do you see how do you see that agnostic binding with maybe when we have Jenkins and we really want to go into um, a doing a lot of filtering and also triggering based on specific parameters and stuff. Uh, so, how, is like, so side note, uh, like Mauricio, this is in relation to like filtering in the uh, like filtering the cloud events as well, and. Uh, we were talking okay. about this the other day, and uh, we were thinking of, about doing a matching of cloud events. Uh, cloud event like like we give a word, and it kind of finds a substring in the uh, cloud event through a match filter or something along those lines. Something that there is in Socket, and something similar. So uh, in Tecton triggers, they have a CL interceptor, the common uh, expression language interceptor. So. Mm -hmm. Do you have an idea we could do something similar in Java in uh, this in this uh, cloud event kind of uh, scenario? OK, so in general, like the infrastructure will allow you to filter events, right? Uh, and Tecton, both like the filters there, and Sockeye also like in the UI. But usually, in order to filter things, yeah, I mean, as soon as you can just parse the event, then you can do whatever you want with it, right? So I'm wondering, kind of like, what's the specific question in there? You have certain oh. filters in Knative and certain filters in in Tecton, right? And then yeah. you can write your own filters in the in the Cloud Events plugin in Jenkins yeah. in Java because you can parse the event and then just filter in any way you want. I would yeah, say. but the filter is something that the user will give in the configuration. So, like, is there something, some library or something we can use for filtering these events? Because uh, in the CL interceptor for Tecton, uh, you can basically do something like uh, header dot, uh, I don't know, like header mm -hmm. dot something, like header dot uh, artifact name is equal to something, something. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm not being very articulate here. Uh, I'm not articulating well here, but uh, you kind of understand what I mean here? I think that I do, but I don't know if there is any specific library to do that, right? Like, I don't I don't know if there is, like, any helper that will allow you to do that in Java itself. 
besides like the cloud events SDK that I think that you're not using, right? Uh, well, you're yeah. using the, the Java SDK, right? Yeah. 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 No, I don't think that there is anything in there to like easily filter cloud events by just sending kind of like a regular expression or something like that. I think that we just need to do that in Java for now. It might be a kind of like a good feature request there for the SDK. But uh, like it doesn't have to be cloud events as such because at the end of the day, uh, we can read these cloud events as JSON mm -hmm. object, right? So uh, yep. something that uh, something to parse JSON objects and the user can give like a string uh, which will uh, help us parse it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and like mo also like super complicated JSON with JSON arrays inside of objects and other JSON objects inside of the array. It, usually if you know event body can be complicated if you're talking about cloud events, but also in general, just JSON. So mm -hmm. if something was to exist like that, I feel it would be easier for even the user to mention, but definitely for us to also um, get that information parsed from the event body. I think that's the more um, sort of tricky part uh, yeah. because the headers are straightforward. I wouldn't worry too much about like going and parsing the body because no framework is providing those filters. I think that if you want to really pass the body, then you just need to use something like, uh, you know, like a JSON framework to just go and parse using the path, basically. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that for now, because I know that that sounds like that's something that people will use, and probably they will. At some point, they will require that, but no framework is actually providing that for now. So I may, might push to kind of like discope that from the demos, and uh, I know that sometimes we are filtering based on the on the metadata right like the cloud event type or the source or or like metadata level artifacts but not going into the body and, and just filtering there because that's usually that's usually a much more complicated thing to do mm -hmm. and it, no, it will not work for all the transports in cloud event and making it you know just making that you're going to support that for all the transport makes it way much more complicated yeah. yeah, because the data which is coming in from different sources is going to be very different, and the uh, uh, structure probably isn't going to be the same, as well. mm -hmm. except the actual cloud event structure. Exactly, folks. I need to drop to another meeting in in a second. So, um, but definitely, I do see that there is a lot of progress in here, and now you are just trying to tackle much more complicated issues and i think that that's great so feel free to open a thread there and just mention me in, in slack and i will just try to help uh, to unblock if, if you keep hitting kind of like these issues uh, with kind of like installation or just even sending cloud events to tecton that should work shouldn't be uh, such a problem thank you so much mauricio and everyone else for the time and appreciate it yes thank, thank you, you for all being <laughs> here Right. Thank you, Viva. Thank you, Kaya, for organizing. And yeah. uh, see you soon. Ping me there in Slack if you need me, please. It's all good. It's all good. Nothing. I, I'm doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah, but thank you so much, guys. I'll see you on Slack. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.